Hey all, I am the Squire, and this is my patch 5.6 rundown. Um, let me know how I do today, and uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff if you uh, enjoy what's going on. Um, so we're starting off this patch with uh, the second of the 2015 buff barge departing from Buff Island. <laughs> um, so <laughs> basically, this patch is ma aimed at buffing up a lot of weaker people with minor nerfs here and there um, to people who definitely needed it. So, we'll start off with Aatrox. Um, so, now his ult when used, he automatically grants 20% of maximum blood well for each enemy hit. So technically, if you were to dive in all five of them in ult, you'd have a full blood well if you didn't already. So that's, that's actually a really good buff. Reddit suggested it. Reddit did it. You know, they made it happen. Um, this is this is a nice buff, nice buff for him. I don't know if it'll fix all the problems that he necessarily has, but I think this is a good step in the right direction. It's just weird that with Aatrox, there's no path that makes him better than anyone else. Like you can build him kind of like a drain tank, but he doesn't do that much damage, and he's not as tanky as say a full tank would be. He's just in a kind of a weird spot, and his kit kind of makes it hard, I think, for Riot to make him too strong. We'll see down the future. I know that they've they've thought about doing some major changes to him, but there's obviously people who need it more, aka Poppy. <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, just a bug fix on Amumu where Despair will no longer toggle off when Amumu ran out of mana. Uh, nerf to Tibbers is early AoE damage. Um, thank God, because even as a support, she did a lot of damage, but really, I think her mid lane was ridiculously strong, especially at 6. That burst would instantly kill you. It'll still do a shit ton of damage, though. So, I mean, they didn't touch, touch any of her scaling or base damages or anything, so. Nothing too crazy here. I don't really think this will change any. I mean, Annie still is flash stun bot. It's not like they made it so you can't stun off Tibbers, so she'll be fine. Um. Bard Q damage up, E cool down down, and plus some bug fixes. So, fixes recommended items. Um, his Q does more damage now, which will be decent. It's it's thirty or er, twenty five damage late game. So, honestly, that's pretty good. Um, and then a bug where he could tether like Jarvan's flag to someone and stun him or whatever. Because you know, Riot's coding is fantastic. Just kidding. But it's not perfect. No code is perfect. Um, Magical Journey's got a lower cooldown, so that'll help out a bunch, I think. I mean, I thought it was a decent cooldown for the amount of utility it brings, but I don't know. There'll be more stuff. More ways to use it more quickly. Um, Magical Journey is now easier to click, so that's good. You know, don't want to. You've all had that, like with Thresh Lantern, where you're trying to click it and you can't. It was even worse on Bard. Gates, so, so that's good. Um, uh, gets an assist when people go through the magical journey, which makes sense. I mean, it gives them a speed buff, so I don't know why it wouldn't. Um, Shaco, LeBlanc, Mordecai, York can all go through the magical journey. Their clones can. Um, and neutral monsters will no longer have their health reset while under stasis, so that's good. Um, kind of a nerf to Cassiopeia late game with how dragon buffs 6% AP buff and death caps buff worked kind of together so it was kind of it was giving I think more than they wanted so they just kind of fixed it so technically it is a late game nerf but they're going to see how it shakes off so I don't know it might not be too bad on her it, it'll definitely hurt her 1 to 2% ability power change they now give roughly 12% less bonus ability power at really, really late game. So it is technically a nerf to her, but if it is as late as they're saying, then it's not, I don't know. It'll definitely hurt. But she needs, I think she needs some buffs right now. I don't know. It's hard. She's super good late game, and, but her early game's weak. She's just kind of a hyper carry. I think she'll still be hyper carry-ish. Um... At least semi buffs. She's slower in human form, but like she loses five in human form, but she gains ten in spider form. So she gains a net of five, I guess. But like this will be huge for her, like 
like basically when you're moving around spider form that's a lot of movement speed so that's good I just don't uh, it's not enough I don't think along with the missile speed increase so her cocoon flies faster I still don't think that's enough um, she I, don't, I still just she doesn't have any really damage and she's not that good as a tank so I don't think she's that good right now she's she needs more than that um, cooldown on entering stealth it gets lower as you get higher levels so that'll help her late game <laughs> Still needs a lot of help, but this buff is really good. Um, so now spell hit, spell hits. So when you're spamming your Q on someone, basically, that's what it means. In reality, is uh, it lowers the cooldown. So you just spam Q on someone, and you can keep going fast. So that'll be good. That that's a really nice buff for her. Don't know if she, it's good enough. I mean, vision is just so easy to get nowadays. Especially, I don't know. Especially that pink ward trinket upgrade. It's only 250. If there's an Evelyn on the enemy team, everyone just buys that and just spams pink, spams pink ward. Everyone. That if you can get people to upgrade their trinket or buy wards, you know. But as a grand scheme of things, <laughs> um, ease cooldown gets lower with rank because it didn't. Wow, none of his abilities had scaling cooldowns. Huh. That's cool. So. Just a nice little buff to Galio. I think Galio is moderately strong right now, especially in the double AP meta. Um, you stack magic resist and do a shit ton of damage. And his ult is game changing. The flash ult can win you a game easily. Especially if you get all five of them. Or like you tack that on with like a Sejuani ult. Or a ton of the other tank junglers that are popular right now. It's He's good. I think he's underappreciated. He does have his bling weaknesses, which is why he's not played more, but I think he's decent. His base damage is really high, too. Um, Aurelia E's damage is lowered, thank god. Um, she'll still be as obnoxious as fuck, but at least she can't burst you down instantly with uh, her E. Well, she'll still do a bunch of damage. still 240 base magic damage, but it is minus 40, so that's good. It's still like freaking two seconds done, so. What's that? <laughs> um, Katarina gets a base health in decrease, but with a health per level increase, and a base health regen lowered. So, they're just trying to. Um, basically, she's got a weaker early game. I bet her late game will be roughly the same. I mean, I'd have to do the math, but, well, let's see, 18. 18 times 3 is it what? 48? It's basically the same thing at level 18. Close enough. <laughs> um, auto attack, animation, fix, or er, improvement, I guess. Because Carthus' is auto animation was horrible. Oh my god, it was just garbage. Your Q was. was just a better auto attack, guaranteed. Like it would, you would be more likely to get a last hit with your Q than you were your auto. I mean, yeah, if you're really good and you get used to it, but it's just it was slow and awkward. It was just awkward. Uh, LeBlanc nerfs. This is actually really good because her damage was just fucking retarded. But like they say, I mean. As much as I hate LeBlanc, I hate playing against LeBlanc, I hate getting instantly killed by LeBlanc, I hate playing AD Carry when there's a LeBlanc, I hate playing even Squishy when there's a LeBlanc, but at the same time, she is semi-balanced in the fact that, especially if she doesn't snowball, you can just, like half the time when you're trying to like W in there as LeBlanc, you'll die late game. You'll just die jumping in there because just like AoE damage or whatever and you're just super squishy. So. I do get what they mean by she's okay. Same with Nidalee. Like, they're both really snowball-y, I think. And their late game is just meh. But she is pretty fucking obnoxious. So I'm glad her ratios got nerfed a little bit. It'll help, help her. Hope I hope it will help her become more manageable. She'll still do a shit ton of damage. Just not as much of a shit ton. <laughs> um, so... There's just a bug with her ult and her passive, so they're fixing it. Pretty simple. 
I mean, if this bug didn't work, it lowered your damage output, but now it'll help a shit ton. <laughs> um, if it, in situations where it was bug, nerfed. Nothing about Nidalee. Basically, um, tank junglers are picking up steam, so they're like, meh, we don't need a nerf her even though everyone wants us to. And they'll just kind of like, look at it for a little while and keep an eye on it. Oh, this one makes me so happy. Nocturne buffs. 30 seconds off of level 1 cooldown, 15 seconds off of rank 2, and then same late game. But I fucking love it because I, I love playing Nocturne, and it was stupid. You had to wait 3 minutes for your freaking ult to come back up at rank 6. Not to mention the ult range is fucking pitiful. Right, please extend it just a little bit at rank one. It's ridiculously short. You can barely get. I don't think you can even get from like tier two tower to tier one tower. No, tier two to tier one mid lane you can. I don't know about top lane or side lanes, but it's just ridiculously short. It feels like anyway. It is. No, it is. <laughs> um, I don't know if this will. I hope this will give him some buffs. I think Nocturne mid hint hint nudge nudge is actually pretty strong. It's got its weaknesses, obviously, but in solo queue, anything can work if you make it happen. And I think it's it's pretty strong. Puts out snowball super hard. Puts out ridiculous damage, and even AOE with his passive. Um, this will help. This will help him though. I don't know if it's gonna bring him to OP level, especially with tanks. And I don't know. He just has a weird identity. You can't really build full damage on him, or you die instantly. Cause like he's an assassin that can get in, but you can't really get out. His stickiness has gotten a lot better over the past little while. With all the minor buffs here and there. I don't know, he doesn't function great as a tank. He's just in a weird place. He's not a high damage, like a super high damage jungler, but he's not a tank either. I don't know. Weird. He's just in a weird spot right now. Um, so Quinn's E re resets her auto, which I think will be great, and has n numerous bug fixes or whatever. But definitely this will be this will be good. I mean, auto attack resets are good, especially on someone like an AD carry. And when you ease someone, it procs your pa it puts your passive on them. So if you if your passive lands on someone, you auto them and E and do the auto reset, that's like <laughs> so much burst damage. But she still has the issues that she's not a great team fighter. She's definitely not more of a traditional AD carry. Anyone that has to go melee form to fight is not going to be a great AD carry. She's a great top laner, I think, and even maybe a, mid, a decent mid lane. I've never tried it, but... So yeah, this will help out Quinn. Um, Q mana reduction, good. Because 110 mana for his Q is kind of ridiculous. Now it is. Okay, okay. And because he's got a new skin coming out, but I didn't want to put that one in there. <laughs> Um, Q buffs to Rise. This will suck. I hate Rise. I hate the face roll that he brings while being super tanky and doing the most damage you've ever seen. Granted, he has a quote unquote weak early game. If you're a melee top laner, you would beg to differ. <laughs> um, this will definitely help him out a lot. I mean, it doesn't look like it's that big of a nerf. Or a buff, maybe, because it's like, what, 15 damage? But with the amount that you spam your Q, it's a lot of DPS over time. DPS, I guess that kind of is over time already. But anyway, um, this will definitely help him out. You might see him play it a bit again, especially as this beefy age kind of comes around. You could definitely see him mid lane against, like, Zed. I bet you would definitely see him mid lane against Zed, actually. Huh. Yeah, he'll probably get played mid. Because you can build Frozen Heart on him and still do a shit ton of damage while being beefy. Kind of like with uh, Keen in his Urgot mid. Those beef teams where they have like a beefy to a tank top laner, tank jungler, tank support, beefy mid laner. I think that's going to start cropping up more. And I think he might be a part of it. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh... Pretty big nerf on Sejuani's later game, mid game damage output, percent health wise. She still does a shit ton of health or damage based on her percent health and the after effect, but losing this much percent health 
on a spammable ability like her W is going to be kind of rough. And the slow reduction on her ult. But the thing is, her ult still stuns. The slow reduction, yeah, you get less rewarded for missing your ult. Congratulations. Um, but in reality, these will hurt her. Maybe I'll finally get to play her in ranked again. Because I liked playing her before she was considered super broken. Well, before Cinder Holt came out. And then Cinder Holt came out, she's completely ridiculously strong. And is basically banned every game. So now maybe she'll be unbanned some games, but she'll still be super strong. Cinder Hulk's fantastic for her. Yeah, basically. She'll be really strong. <laughs> End of story. Loses damage output, though. But part of the reason people like her is more for the CC than the damage output. The damage output's just a fantastic bonus. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, whether he's shaking the top lane. Okay, so his E does more damage and does damage based on his max health. Fantastic buff for Singe, especially as the late game goes, as the game gets later and later. He's going to do a lot of damage. He already still does a lot of damage, but that'll help him out a bunch. Don't know if he'll see play yet in, like, professional. Definitely, I mean, in solo queue, he'd be great. But. Uh, Jungle Scion gets nerfed a little bit. Um, the pass through damage on his E is reduced. So not gr not huge nerfs. I mean, they're not nerfing his tankiness, so he'll still be a super mega tank. His jungle might be hurt a little bit by 10%, but I think it'll still be decent. Um, but he'll definitely his top lane, I don't think, will be affected that much. Um, Twitch gets... Hold on. So... Basically, his passive does more damage early game. Yeah, his passive does more damage earlier in the game, which is good because right now it's a joke. You would like have six stacks on someone and they'd have like 10 health and they would most likely regen their health back before it killed them. Granted, that's probably an over exaggeration, but still, it's pretty ridiculously low. So that'll help him out. I think he's starting. I mean, I know Sneaky's been spamming him. I know. Who was it? Winter Fox, I think, played him in a hyper carry comp. Yeah, it's not necessarily like just because one game, but I think he's starting to get played more, and this will definitely help him out more. He will get played more. He's still great. I mean, especially in solo queue, you can win a fight, basically. If you get to late game without being super behind, you can win a whole fight just with your ult. Like, it's like a guaranteed fight win, because you... If you're even or even ahead as Twitch and you just ult their whole team and you just spray down their whole team as a mega fed late game made to carry, you just shred through people. So he's great, I think, in solo queue, especially since you can kind of surprise people. You can assassinate people as an AD carry, so that's good. Um, Vigor buffs, so more mana per second. Good for him. Uh, range increase on his Q and his I love this change on his E so like let's say because even though it's not instant your E pops up and then Tristana would just jump through it and even though she jumped through it or whatever she would s like still be stunned but she'd be away from you you know so it wouldn't work but now it just stops them which is fantastic so this will help him out a bunch and I'm glad they uh, finally changed this um can take a Thresh Lantern while you're ulting as well, cause um, York can now use his crit strike while hitting people, and the range on his Q got increased, so that's good. Um, who boy? Uh, Zig's mana cost. This will help him out a bunch. Um, Zig's is decently good, I think, right now. The issues. He's basically a worse Zira, but it's different too, cause like, oh my god. Um, because basically Zira's ult can hit like one person, like you can snipe someone with it, but with Zig's ult you can hit a whole team, so I think that's where it differs, and then like Zig's Q you can bounce, but Zira's Q is like AoE, so it's, it's different, and I think Zig's is more spammable, and he can like move around and stuff while he does it, so... That's different. Xylene's got an increase in health per level, which is good. Um, basically, everything's getting buffed on him. His Q-ray, P-ray show, lower mana cost, um, 
W cooldown, W mana cost, E mana cost. Basically, it's just like, okay, this isn't working, or the changes didn't like help him out very much. Like he's lost a lot of win rate and stuff. So this is their like, okay, let's just try and bandage what we've destroyed. So that'll be good for Xylan. He might see some play. He's just not that great, especially in solo queue. He's great in like competitive where he can ult a hyper carry or whatever. But I just don't know if that's something that's going to be needed. Like hyper carries aren't super meta yet. They might be as tanks get more popular. But as of right now, I don't think he'll play. He might see some play soon. But for now, I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. Texture updates. Go check these out on like Surrender at 20. Uh, Rise looks fantastic. Rumble, they, they all look great. Full Metal doesn't look like someone took a shit on it anymore. So, <laughs> so that's good. Um, yeah, at least has got some, it's all good. Um, here we go. Cheaper, uh, Chalice, not too huge. That's great because Chalice was, it was like, why would I get a Chalice, which is, well, you, you would get it if you need magic resist, but it's like 600 versus 1,000 for mana regen. And you instantly get cooldown reduction if you go the uh, fiendish or no, what is it? Oh crap! Forbidden idol into like a Morellos. So it's it is different obviously because this one gets gives magic resist. But anyway, um, more mana regen, increased mana regen on Athenes, and mana restore and kill assist is up. So basically, for people who like to play defensive and stuff, um, this is a great item. And so they're just trying to buff it up, give because everyone just builds Morellos. Ninety percent of the time, it's better. But this is this is nice to kind of bring it up there. Um, bug flicks on Righteous Glory. Scuttler gives a lot less vision range, which it'll still be important to get, but it'll be crazy to see how much different it is. Really, um, you can have someone in your team's base gates. That's cool. Nothing too crazy, just uh, a nice little quality of life thing. Jungle XP, this will be great, so you can catch up easier, and junglers can kind of keep up, even if they like fail some ganks or stuff, so that they're not getting like the same level as bot lane, even though they were like trying to actually do something. So that'll help. Um, new chant music is different between normals and ranked games, so for all those people, you know. Those people, they don't, or, or you just forget what you queued up for. I, I understand. I've done it before. Um, but so now there'll be different music, so you can tell as long as the chat box that says whether it's ranked or not, um, or not ranked. But if you lose LP, if you dodge or whatever. Um, texture changes. Beta has been removed from the name, and then they removed the screens and stuff because there's a little bug for it. So they're gonna fix that. Twisted Tree Line, um, Luden's Echo is removed, but they're just on PvE today. They put up a new build path, so that's good for Twisted Tree Line and Dominion players. Orb of Winter now has Negatron Cloak as part of it. It's a little cheaper, and the combined cost is more. Tooltips are fixed, and there's a couple bug fixes. So, that is all for this patch. Have fun, check it out. Um, See what new champions you think are good and stuff, and um, just let me know how I did, um, and have fun playing League of Legends, guys. Thank you.